In this video, we're going to briefly discuss Pascal's law, and then we're going to talk about how Pascal's law is relevant to the principles of hydrostatic pressure and how it can be applied to devices known as barometers. And barometers are used to measure atmospheric pressure. So first of all, Pascal's law tells us that in a pressurized system, changes in pressure at any point are transferred throughout the liquid or throughout the fluid. Now what this means is that in a pressurized system such as we see here, the pressure at any given point within that fluid is going to be the same. There are some limitations to this as we'll see when we start to look at barometers. Now this image here is a hydraulic jack and the image itself has been borrowed from schoolphysics.co.uk. But where Pascal's law becomes important in this situation is that we can also say that the pressure at the surface of cylinder one here, so directly below the load, is equal to the pressure at this surface here, directly below the piston. If we know the cross-sectional area of piston one on the right hand side, and we know the magnitude of the load, we can determine how much pressure that creates at the surface of our right hand piston. Now if that pressure is equal to the pressure of piston two on the left hand side, we can then determine the size of force required here in order to lift the load. So Pascal's law tells us that any change in pressure at cylinder two is going to lead to a change in pressure at cylinder one. But at the same time, the pressure throughout the fluid is going to be the same. Now, as we're going to see in a moment when we discuss hydrostatic pressure, we're assuming that the hydrostatic pressure is negligible when compared to the pressure in the fluid. And that's a fair assumption, providing the vertical distance between piston one and piston two isn't too excessive. So let's take a look at our barometer and then we can discuss hydrostatic pressure. So here we have our device known as a barometer, and as mentioned earlier, a barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Now as a point of reference, atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101.325 pascals. The further we move away from sea level, we would expect that pressure to drop as the air becomes thinner, but we also see pressure variations in our atmosphere as a direct result of the circulation of the air. So we get areas of high and low pressure. Now it may not be apparent on first inspection, but what we have here is a closed system, because although the bath of the barometer is open to the atmosphere, it's actually atmospheric pressure that encloses that liquid. So we have a closed system here. Now when we spoke about Pascal's law, we said that the pressure throughout this fluid is going to be equal. But we did mention that there's a limitation to that. And the reason there's a limitation is because pressure increases with depth. And it's also dependent on the density of the liquid. Now in a barometer, the liquid that we use is typically mercury. And mercury has the chemical symbol Hg, and it has a density of 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed. Therefore, the deeper down in mercury you go, the higher the pressure you'd experience. So the density of mercury is 13.6 times the density of water and roughly twice the density of steel. So it's a very dense liquid. And that's why we use it in barometers. Because in actual fact, as pressure is dependent on height, the pressure at the top of the liquid, or the top of the mercury here, is going to be different from the pressure at the bottom of the mercury here. But what we do know is that the pressure at the surface here is going to be equal to the pressure at the bottom of the column. And the reason for that is because they're at the same heights. So the way that we determine the pressure at the bottom of the tube section here is using our formula for hydrostatic pressure. And our formula for hydrostatic pressure states that pressure equals density times gravity times height. Now using a mercury field barometer, a typical height would be somewhere in the order of 0.75 
meters or 75 centimeters. So if we apply our formula, we have pressure equals density, 13,600, times gravity, 9.81, times the height of our column of liquid, 0 0.75, giving us a pressure equal to 100.062 pascals. Now note that this is below the pressure at sea level, but as mentioned, pressure changes with elevation, and we also get high and low pressures throughout the atmosphere. So what we see here is a balance between atmospheric pressure and the pressure caused by 75 centimetres worth of mercury. If this barometer was filled with water as an example, then that column of liquid wouldn't be 0.75 metres, it would be 13.6 times larger. In actual fact, it would be just over 10 metres high. And this is why when we apply Pascal's law, we can often neglect this effect. But it is important for us to understand hydrostatic pressure because we can use it to explain the operating principles of other devices such as manometers. And we're going to be discussing manometers in the next video.